Good morning to you. It's Friday and welcome to Sabah's way of life. There are so many things that I need to share with you to catch up, which I think will be very useful for all of you listening. But today has to be a garden update and then I'll just take you into the kitchen and just share what I'm I'm cooking um, today. It's a really busy day, so I need to cook something quick. But let's go straight into the garden. And just to show you what has happened, just it's over the last week, I think. So without further ado, let me turn this, switch the camera around. Right, we're gonna start with the raised bed. If you look at the raised bed, you can see things are starting to grow. Now this is where, um, I've learned now from what I'm, I'll talk about this later, but this is where the phase transition takes place in the system of growing your fruit and vegetables. And what happens is everything is very, very slow for a long, long time. And then suddenly everything grows and we're at that phase transition point now where you're going to see everything fruit and flower and leaf. Um, so look at the carrots here, they're growing a lot bigger. And I have been very busy since the last update. So for example, I have over here transplanted all the sunflowers. Now the sunflowers are meant to go into just one pot. I don't have the space in my garden, so I don't follow what the rules exactly. It just means they won't grow as fast. So these are the tall giant sunflowers and I've put two in a pot. Um, if you notice there, they've got it's got this yellow leaf and i think i'm not sure but i think i've overwatered it and we've had a sudden change in weather where it became cooler and they need as the name suggests they need sun right so let me just see how they go these are the dwarf sunflowers and again you really should be putting one in a pot or two in a pot but i've put three in here and i've put quite a lot in here and which is fine that's how I want to do it and that's um, that's we're just going to I'm going to measure the progress now you can see the lettuces are finally coming through and I've still got snails or slugs trying to eat them even here in this raised bed but um, there's quite a few tricks that I've learned over the last few days that I'm using and most of it not just from looking at other YouTube sites, but understanding the law of systems. Systems is everything, and the more I delve into it, the more I realize that is the answer to understanding anything in life. And that is probably the most important um, education that I want to share with you down the line, because it is it is very it is life-changing. Okay, let's go back to this. You'll see here I've got these onions starting to sprout up a lot more. But there's these other onions that seem to have these grass-like um, shoots coming out. And I don't know why. Um, it might be, it is a different type of onion maybe. I know leeks do that a lot. So I'm just going to wait and see what happens. The peas are growing beautifully tall and I can't wait for them to fruit because I just want to munch on them while I'm gardening nobody else is going to get a look in because I just eat them myself. Look at this beautiful plant here. I cannot remember the name. Um, if one of you can, let me know. But it's one of those rockery style plants that you plant on edges like this and um, it does need the sun obviously for the or, or, some some level of sun for the flowers but I put them on here my mum gave me these she divides these they're all over her front garden and it'll hang over here um, I've also got these um, I think they're trailing lobelia purple as well I'm waiting for them to flower here I've got the um, oh what was the name of this one? This is marigold. These are the pot marigolds, calendula, and they're growing quite well. They look like spinach, but they're not. Okay, now, here are the lilies, and these are bright orange lilies, and I do need to divide them um, for next year, but they have a very short time display, but they're so beautiful, I get mesmerized. I can't stop looking at them. Let's now, by the way, there's the rocket. Just look at how healthy it looks. And I'm picking leaves and just eating them at the moment in the garden. Very, very, very nutritious. Because I've, 
So when you grow your own food and when you grow your own food and you use your own soil that you've created and you've sown with your own hands the seeds, even if they aren't purely heritage, heirloom, organic seeds, obviously better if they are, you can actually change the nature of that seed just through your um, your own consciousness and frequency. That doesn't mean that that's what you should do. I'm just saying that it is possible. Anything is possible. There's a whole sphere of science called epigenetics. Some of you have heard of it. And I've just started reading. I mean, I used to follow somebody called Bruce Lipton for a long time who talked a lot about epigenetics, but I'm learning epigenetics in a very different way now through the work of Dr. Shiva Ayodhari. And I keep mentioning him and he's going to be a center of my learning at the moment because I'm on the systems health course and he's one of the leading scientists in the world. And you'll understand why when you research him and realize how different he is and how there's so much resistance because he's creating massive change in the world, in every way, politically, from a health perspective, well, everything's intertwined. But um, I don't want to digress, I'll talk about that another time. Let's go back into the greenhouse. Right, now look, can you see how things have grown here? So first of all, if you remember the gourd, this is the bottle gourd, it's doing really, really well. It's because it's now developing extra leaves and I've kept it in the greenhouse because it needs heat. So it's like a sister of bitter gourd. It's a type of gourd. It's excellent for health, and I can talk about that one another time. But I'm growing, growing my own. It's going to grow in the greenhouse. I have to find room for it. The other thing is to show you these lady fingers again, Pindi, that I failed the first time round, and now I've got these three growing, and I've got extra leaves growing. But I don't know whether it's going to fruit. I just have to try. It needs a lot of heat and our temperatures here are fluctuating in the UK. It's mental. They they need some form of consistency and, and heat and sun. So I'm really giving it a lot of TLC, putting it out in the sun when the sun's, you know, really out in the sun when, this, when it's warm and bringing it back in the greenhouse in the evenings. These tomatoes you can see are growing, albeit slowly. They're growing and there's many more tomatoes that I'm going to put in pots today outside. It's a fruit day today. There were three fruit days. It's the last of the three fruit days and it's a descending moon. You can see on the last leaf day, a couple of days back, um, I've sown some parsley, different types of parsley. I've got curly leaf parsley, plain leaf parsley, and I've even got corn seeds in here. And I'm gonna try corn for the first, the sweet corn. I'm gonna try sweet corn for the first time. Even though I don't have enough land soil here, I'm gonna put them into the really big pots. I don't know if it's gonna work. And put them out into the driveway where it's full sun and put them together. It's <laughs> good. But I'm just gonna see if it works. I've, I've got lots of tips from a great YouTube site, Ben his name is, and I'll share him down below in the notes a bit later. Now, um, let me show you the mar marigolds were eaten, even in the greenhouse by something. But over here, I've got three or four that have survived and I'm waiting for them to flower before I plant them out. Otherwise they will be eaten by the slugs. Um, and I've also sown, there's a, look, there's a couple more here. Like, I've just been looking after the ones that have survived. The dahlias here, I'm waiting for them to get a little bit bigger because they were almost eaten by slugs. And um, and I've just prayed that they survive because these are pom-pom dahlias, which beautiful display. And I've run out of the seeds. So there's one, two, three, only four, five, six here. And they are coming back to life. And there's many more marigolds. Um, in those seed trays. Yes, you can still you can still um, sow seeds. Only now the weather has got warmer and this is the time to do it, which is why I've been so busy. Right, now, let me tell um, Over here, I've got kale. This is the uh, curly kale and they need to go out on the next leaf day, but you can see they're getting really strong. 
a lot more pot marigold here, calendula, again waiting for these to flower and get bigger and stronger so they can be resistant to pets. Lettuces, I've got um, this lettuce mix growing in here and so I'm just waiting again for these to get stronger before I transplant them out. Okay. Um, the nasturtiums are doing all different types of nasturtiums and again you can eat these and these are doing beautifully i've got trailing nasturtiums i've got upright nasturtiums all different types, all different colors these are going to show a beautiful display there are many many more in here look then they look healthy this is cumin it's the only one that german oh god something's eaten that damn it um oh what is that See, there's something getting in there. Let me get it out. So annoying. This is the only seed that survived. And something, you can see there's some slime in here. Something's been in here eating my cumin, damn it. So I'm just sharing that with you. So I'm gonna spray it with, oh. I'm gonna probably, look, it's suffering because something's been at it. Um, so I'm going to try and repot it, maybe check up what I need to do because I really do want it to survive and it was not like this because something has eaten it, look even this one's broken, I don't know if it's going to survive, it's the only one that I had, uh, I've tried every year to grow cumin and it's not easy, oh, it's very frustrating, anyway look I don't want to bore you, um, right basil, the basil is starting to germinate even the cucumber there's another cucumber there that's not germinating there's just this one that's germinated it's the weather we've got really poor weather um anyway now finally not finally i always do that i have planted out a lot of the broccoli different types of broccoli you can see here i've transplanted it and yes the slugs love them and i'm going to talk about slugs in more detail in a minute but can you see they're everywhere. Now broccoli and beetroot love to be planted together. It's companion planting. One helps the other. The beetroot is a root. The broccoli comes up outward with all its nitrogen and there must be a symbiotic synergistic relationship. Oh, we work. We work synergistically. We, we don't work alone. We work synergistically. One helps the other and that makes individual stronger and stronger You've got to keep that in your mind that's how the system of nature works and we are very much um, a part of nature the strawberry plants you might have noticed they are they're from a couple of years ago and I had everywhere look you can see these are the much bigger strawberries the general commercial ones and these are the wild strawberries which is in the more shady area at the back of the garden um, and they give tiny sweet strawberries woodland strawberries um, here is that massive rhubarb plant that the leaves are just getting bigger and look at the stems look at that rhubarb stem underneath there's lots of them look at that right now I want to show you this this is a peach tree this was given to me by a neighbour three years ago who's now died and I want to tell you his story Ernie his name is another time look at these baby peaches coming out how beautiful do they look can you see there's lots of them look now I have had to really work and look after this peach tree over the last few days let me just stand somewhere where it's easy for you to see me the light over the last few days ants have got at this peach tree and they're already there I just want to show you look I don't know if you can see anything crawling yeah you can look now what's happened is that the peach tree has aphids that happens and what I try and do not try I do is I spray with just washing up liquid that seems to get rid of the aphids it's a very loose soapy water and I get on a step ladder and I spray all the leaves it's a fruit day today and I'm going to do it again today um, but the ants they suck out so there's aphids there and then they suck out the juice I think of the aphids I'm not sure you can do your homework and check because I don't know everything but 
what happens is the leaves start to look this is what happens to the leaves it's happened down here I'll just show the leaves start to scrunch up you can see here it's very sad we start feeling sorry for the for the for the tree when that happens and I, I say sorry that I didn't notice earlier but I have been up and I've cut all those leaves off because that's where the the aphids are um, concentrated and then I've sprayed the rest of the plant and then I've tried even spraying garlic spray and I put Vaseline over the grease over the trunk to stop the ants going up but that hasn't worked and this is the point that I want to make this is the important point I want to make here this re is regards to slugs and um, is regards to um, aphids and anything in the garden look I used to have in my mind that, how do I get rid of aphids? What is the answer? Oh, just spray it with washing up liquid. And so I would do that. But actually, or how do I get rid of slugs? Oh, you know, just put some beer, um, you know, some beer down, beer traps down, and that would work. And what I've realized, yes, they do all work, but it's a dynamic relationship. So, the real way to do it, the real answer, is look at all the different ways that you can eliminate slugs from the garden or aphids. So let me talk about slugs for a moment. I was doing a lot of research um, about slugs, I've done it over the years, and I understand from a biodynamic perspective that slugs have a role to play and they come in to balance the mineral content, metal content of the soil. And because we tend to use iron implements in our garden, which then changes the nature of the soil because there needs to be a balance of copper and iron and all the others, um, all the other metals and other minerals, um, slugs who, which have a copper content in them, they come in to balance the soil and in the process of doing that if they come across lettuces or brassicas they eat them now this is a biodynamic principle you probably never heard of it and i have shared that link in the last video or the one before that so listen to it and educate yourself but then you see the thing is they're still here and I use copper implements now 90% of the time I bought copper implements last year it helped enormously I didn't have slugs although I didn't do much gardening but this year they're still here they've gone at the moment but they're still here and I couldn't understand why and then I realized it's geoengineering it's all the shit that's coming down from the skies we know that there's there's all these chemtrails everywhere and and other stuff and when it rains it comes down into the soil and all these types of heavy metals whatever they are that come in you just have to look it up you know what I'm talking about um, mercury and all, all other iron I don't know I don't know what they all are look it up and it's strange because you know I observe a lot and it wasn't just my garden I would walk along, because I'm always observing, I'd walk along to, towards my mother's house and all over the ground after it had rained, there were slugs everywhere. My, I got to my mother's, she said, I don't understand it, there's slugs everywhere. Why? Why suddenly? And it's not just that it's rained, it's because of all the rubbish that's coming from the skies into our soil that's damaging it. They have a very important part to play. So start thinking from a macro perspective from a go up onto your eagle's perch those who have been following my work for a long time will know that I am always talking about get up onto an eagle's perch and look from up above objectively be objective down below to see what's happening look at the big picture it's not about this or that slugs or not it, it's about the bigger picture. Right, now let me return. So what I decided to do is everything. I realized that I'm in the garden gardening and 
it is a focused dynamic relationship so it's not one measure that's going to help not one preventative measure it's, it's system just like we are if we have a problem in if I have a problem in my gut when I had Crohn's it was a disease of the gut right that's what mainstream reductionist medicine tells us because it's all about the parts but I didn't heal by healing the gut I healed holistically by changing my way of life and that involved changing what I eat, changing how I think, changing my location, focusing on my breathing, sitting in the sun. They collectively, synergistically, interconnectedly healed my condition. It just manifested itself through my gut because that is my weak point, my genetic disposition weakness is of the gut so it manifested there each of us has a different genetic disposition so in the same vein when you think of it as a system my garden is a system it's not one thing it's everything that I do so come out early in the morning and I'm looking in the garden and I'll go if you've got pots slugs love going under pots I move the pots away from those areas where they're plants that they're susceptible to eating I've moved those pots and underneath, sure, there were, there were some slugs there. How do I get rid of them? I didn't, I, some of them I feed to my hens because they love slugs. Some of them I put into a big bucket and I put water in it and put a lid and I drown them because the, the nematodes, which are tiny bacteria inside our soil, we don't have enough. And I'm sure it's because of the geoengineering, but we don't have enough slugs die automatically when they have nematode nematode bacteria inside them but if they have enough it will kill the slugs so what i do is pop them in the in a bucket put a lid on it put water in it and i'm popping all the slugs in there and the water will be filled up with nematodes soon and i'll use some of that water when i'm watering the plants that i want to protect and that will keep the slugs away there's so many things you can do. Beer traps. I haven't seen slugs recently, but I might go and buy some stout and put that into a container, put it into the soil. I'll probably put it into a pulse, um, I won't, won't use metal, but some other container. So it's sticking out just a little bit out of the soil so that they can get in and they will drown. And um, you have to be dynamic and do all different things, all different ways of preventing. That is the way to do it. Observe and use different methods. It's the same with your body. Think of everything as a system. It's the same with the acids. I thought, what can I do? I spray, and I spray every day if I have to. I put grease around the, the, uh, the, the branches, you know, the trunk, right? And then I'm looking at them and I'm, I'm, I'm cutting off all the diseased leaves, which is helping enormously. I spray garlic. The other thing with slugs is if it's not raining the next day or overnight, I spray all of the brassicas with, with garlic water. I s explained that in another video before, and that seems to have helped. So um, that is how I do it. Right, what can I show you? Oh, I, I want to show you this. this is a geum or geum. Look at that. Can you see? Look at these orange flowers. Look at this. This is a plant that was given to me by three years ago by a friend and I nearly let it die. And it likes to be in the shade. I looked up, I understood what it likes. It's like a little woodland daisy. This is a shady area of the garden, although the, the morning sun is on it, but that's about all it gets. And um, look how beautiful it looks, just this little area. I might make a little pond there, but you must go and get games. I got these from Range. They were three for eight pounds. It was a deal for the bank holiday, and I did share it with you. Don't know how many of you went out to get it. Over here is a mint, which I, a wild mint, which I thought was dead. And I'm going to tell you the story about this mint. It's not the one I bought recently. This is a wild mint that's coming out, and I thought it was dead, and it's not. <laughs> it's coming up. Over here, in this, I've got this beautiful plant here. In the soil below, I have actually put a nitrogen fixer, which is methi, fenugreek, which of course I'm going to, I'm going to let it grow, take out the 
cut off the leaves, leave the roots in because it, it's a nitrogen fixer for the soil. It's really good to put it in the soil. It puts lots of nitrogen in there and um, keeps the soil nourished, which is also going to help the plant. But then I'll dry the, the fenugreek in the sun and use it in my cooking. That's the way to do it. Right. Now over here is that Welsh onion. You can see here the two are flowering beautifully. This is my pride and joy, this Welsh onion. Look at it. Look at that. Look. There's a dragonfly. I don't know if you can see it. It's, oh, it's lovely. And the allium, allum lilies are, have come up beautifully. This is just in the last few days. Look. Even this clematis that looked very sad and I, I've been doing everything to revive her but her flowers are just starting to bloom. Looks beautiful against the alum lilies, white. Over here I've got about seven, eight, nine tomato plants that are going out. And this here is the rocket which is trying to flower and I do need to cut it off because otherwise it will change the taste of the rocket. So I'm gonna cut them all off so we can just keep using the leaves. All right. I'm just going to take you inside and just show you what I'm doing while I'm cooking today to give you some inspiration. All right, let's turn this around. Okay, so today, as you can see here, I have got some spring onion and potatoes. These are two small potatoes that were lying around and I needed to do something with it. So I went to the local greengrocers and bought a couple of spring onions. I'm going to add some of my Welsh onion stalks to this as well because the taste is much more potent than the one in the garden. So what I've done is I've chopped, up, chopped, chopped the spring onion so that the green part is on one side and the white, the onion part, you know, the, the, the bulb part is on the other side chopped up the potatoes and here I've got garlic and ginger which I'd crushed because I was cooking something else I'll add more to it and then I'm going to add spices like turmeric cumin I put cumin in everything turmeric cumin a little bit of chili I might put a little bit of crushed coriander remember my spice um, drawer is here a little bit of coriander in salt chili um, haldi, which is turmeric I've just mentioned to you, a bit of dry ginger as well, and then fresh ginger and garlic. And I'm just going to cook it in, probably in a good quality olive oil, um, not ghee. Big, I can cook it in ghee. He kind of solidifies, which is fine, but I kind of like the taste of the the potatoes and onions with a little bit of olive oil. I'll make sure it's not at high temperature because that turns the oil carcinogenic. So I'll be very careful and very gentle with it. And that's gonna be my dinner for today. And I'm gonna eat that with a lovely homemade hot chapati. The other thing I wanna show, I had these chilies that I bought, not, not the hot ones, but they were the kind of green, they looked like bullet chilies, about that big. And I decided to stuff them because for, I'm very, very conscious of two things. I'm very aware of what my body asks for. And I'm very, this is important. I'm very aware of when my body is cheating me, my mind is cheating me and is craving sweets, which it does, because I, I do like my chocolates. And I will continue to eat chocolates, but I'm, I, I, I'm careful, I regulate it. And I'll eat the right type of chocolate, dark, um, but I'm very aware when a message comes into my brain that it's a craving message. And I'm very aware of the difference when the same signal comes into my brain that is telling me I need a certain type of food. Whether that's a sour taste, whether that's a bitter taste, whether that's a sweet taste, a certain type of sweet, you, it, it's... This goes, and I'm going to talk about this in systems biology as well, and also my understanding of Ayurveda from when I healed with Crohn's, that we have a certain constitution, Bitta, Gatha, Vata, that's very basic. And based on that constitution and where we are at our life at any given time, where our state of balance and equilibrium is, 
I am going to share a lot of this with you in the, in the days to come, in the weeks to come, where our equilibrium is. If we're out of balance, our body often tells us, but we miss the signals. We mustn't miss the signals. Now, my body has been telling me for quite a few days, it had been telling me because I fixed it, that it needs something sour. I need something sour. Um, maybe because I've had too much sweet or I don't know, but... Um, and I needed some chilli as well. So what I did, I love just putting lemon into my mouth, a nice sour lemon. And I did that yesterday. There was a bit of lemon left over and I squeezed it into my mouth. These days, the lemons you buy do not have that beautiful, my mouth is watering, that beautiful sour taste. But if you can find lemons from an, an Indian store, the smaller ones, they're much better. They're quite juicy and they're really sour. Lovely. Don't buy bottled lemon juice. That's um, processed crap. It's poison. It's, you have to be desperate to use that. So um, go back. These chilies here, if I just get a spoon. Look, what I did is I cut them open and I stuffed them with um, a mixture of roasted ground cumin, obviously home, home ground. Um, so the cumin and chilli and salt chili powder and salt and loads of lemon juice and I mixed it all together with a tiny bit of oil um I'm trying to think did I put anything in? I think I put a little bit of coriander in there and then I put I slit the chili and put it inside and I just let it marinate and then I gently cooked it like um shallow fried it in ghee a little bit of olive oil and ghee for a long time because I didn't need to even add water because there was so much lemon juice in there and look, let me just turn this. I'm going to. Oh, it's so good. And it's hot. It's delicious. It's my body needs. And it just kind of balances my constitution. And this is where you want to get to. Where you get into a state. A physical state where you, you start trusting yourself. Not with somebody else. Get the education. You need the education first. And then you start trusting yourself to make decisions. You take charge. I can't recommend enough going to have a look at systemshealth.com and look at the work that Dr. Shiva has put in to help the working people. He, he's all about a bottoms-up movement, which is the only way we are going to topple the current system there is no other way and I've spent years on research and trying different ways and this is the only way you'll know when you've read history real history but I want to talk about all of that another time I hope this was a good update um, I need to carry on and finish the cancer series which I'm going to do probably in the next few days I've got some very busy days ahead um, of activism and stuff with my health and family and on Sunday I'll do an update if I can from a location that I'm going to be in up north because um, I'm learning how to to shoot uh, what I mean by that is using sort of an air rifle shooting for foxes and pheasants and I'm it's just another skill that I'm learning with a great countryman who's been um his whole family lineage has been shooting on the land all their lives. It's a really raw, rustic way of living. So I'll share more on that when we, um, on another update. For now, have a lovely day. That The sun is out. It's Friday here in, in um, East Berkshire and it's beautiful. Enjoy the day.